we think too much in silos. So the fitness guy thinks in terms of fitness, has so, and the food uh, guys uh, or girl thinks in in terms of food, and then I think of sleep, uh, so in the meditation things of meditation. I actually think uh, so they are so interconnected, and uh, so that we need to have at least a few people thinking on what if we take that more helicopter view or more holistic approach, and uh, so that is actually has uh, so tagging all of these things or at least connecting the dots. Hey everyone, welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Alan Sakian. We're on site at the beautiful Transformative Technology Conference for our second annual partnership with them. We are now going to be talking about circadian rhythms and much more. We have Dr. Roy Raymond joining us on the show. Hi, Roy. Hi, thank you for inviting me over here. We're super pumped to talk about this subject with you. It's such a crucial one. It's a crucial one. So, uh, so we in this kind of era, uh, so that nobody gets enough sleep. So the economic uh, so, machinery is pumping. It's 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 all about uh, so being in the present and being alive and doing the things you want to. Uh, so and 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 the fear of missing out of everything. Yeah. Well, yeah. sleep is actually the greatest thing you can do. Yeah, yeah, I'm so pumped to talk about this with you. This is extremely important, and actually, Matt Walker has been a huge influence in my life a lot in this field. Oh, I love Matt. As Matt's Matt and huge. I worked together as so in the past, so uh, he's a great advocate for sleep as well. He m really brought the topic to a level that everybody can yes, understand yes, yes, yes. and knows that it's important. And Sachin Panda's also done a great job yeah. in this field as yeah, well. These, yeah, so. these guys are huge, and I'm, I'm I'm pumped to talk to you about it, Roy. Let's um let's jump in though with one of our favorite questions that we like asking our guests. Are we really all one? It's a very interesting question, has so because has so I have a more biological background and from a biological perspective, has so I should say like yes, has so we're built of the same material, so we should be one. But has so also from all the research that I've been doing in the past, has so I know that a lot of things that we try, for instance, to help sleep people sleep better, work for some and don't work for others. So I think, has, so if you would come back has, so to this great planet Earth has, so in a thousand years, you would be kind of shocked of how we now look, has, so how we looked in, in this era on how the human being is, because uh, we know only a tiny, tiny piece has, so of what we are, be, we are as a human being. So um, yes, we're one. No, we're not one. Wait, when's, where's the not one part? So the not bond, you can see it as, as totally different kind of skews from a so build of the same material. Uh, so I can have a green car and a blue car and a car that's running on uh, so on electrical power and gas power. So and I think that's uh, so if you use that kind of analogy, uh, so you can have a zillion different cars, but they are all cars. Uh, so and this is the same actually I think for a human being. We are wired differently. So we have all a brain, but all brains are wired different differently. So I don't th uh, think the same way as you're doing. Uh, so and that's also where <coughs> experience comes in and uh, so nurture comes in. So. Building building blocks are the same, but then in the end, uh, so we all end up as individuals. So and then we're no no longer one. Okay, interesting. So it's kind of like the we are all one from the very source, or from God, or creation, or Big Bang, or whatever you want to call it. And then there's this uh, complexity that evolves over time. Although it's the same building blocks, um, it is these different subjective first-person experiences that we have as nerve endings of this creation. Yeah. So, uh, so it's and, and it's 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 already has uh, so it's already starting in the womb. Has uh, so where all those connections are created. So, uh, so same material, but sometimes different wiring and sometimes different uh, so experience that. That create us to uh, to be the unique individuals that we are. So then, but at the same time, even if you have an experience um, that is maybe some sort of a very impactful experience, very upstream in your life, some sort of maybe a traumatic experience that you mm -hmm. later find was a very that had a beautiful treasure on the other yeah. side of it. Although I may not have had that same experience in 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 my life, being still one in the sense that as a collective as a unity 
we had that experience. We collectively yeah. had your experience. Yeah. Uh, so, but I also believe that uh, so unless you got that real experience, uh, so it's very hard to really kind of uh, so have that insight and that empathy has uh, so what's really going on. Yeah. Uh, so because you need that experience to actually see what happens to you. But it comes back to a great philosophical question. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, so we all say that this is blue. Uh, so the color here, uh, but. Um, you might perceive uh, so it as being green, but we label it as, uh, as blue. I do not know whether you see it as the same blue as I do. And uh, so, of course, there are measurements, and we can do that right now. But again, I think if we come back as uh, so to this earth as uh, so and see the state of science and what we know about the human, the complex uh, human being, and uh, so it will be totally different. So, what do you think is the purpose of creation? Um, the purpose of creation. Um, you need to explain be, be a little bit more, Hans, so what do you mean by, by creation? Or what so, is the purpose of source or of this reality that we're in? Oh, that's a very philosophical one for me. Uh, what I said is I'm, I'm very uh, so biological uh, determined. Uh, so um, I think that's for everybody has uh, so on earth has uh, so will have their kind of different kind of purpose or different kind of meaning in life. Uh, so, um, um, I always get a little bit scared if I think of those things. Uh, so like, oh, uh, so you have a life and it starts and it ends and what will be, uh, what was before it and what will be uh, so uh, after we die, I do not know. Uh, so that's also why I want to live in the present and live in the mm. now uh, because I can cr across the street, there might be a driver, he might hit me and then uh, so what's next? I do not know. So I, I hope that the purpose of life is uh, so that and so you live and you learn and you might take that uh, so to a next level. But being a scientist, uh, so I have no evidence uh, so that there will be a next level. So it's very hard for me also from a rational aspe aspect to kind of think there would be. And then what about these states of interconnectedness that you maybe have felt or ego death or unconditional love or deep presence? Yeah. Tell us about your experiences with that. Yeah, so um, I always... It's again, it's I have a lot of experience with those kind of moments that you have so really think, hey, there should be an extra power has so that made this happen. Uh, so but it's interesting how kind of restricted and you are has so uh, being wired as you are by education has so uh, so to kind of just kind of put it aside has so like, hey, I cannot rationalize it. So you kind of put it aside. Well, actually, has so it would be interesting to dive a little bit deeper into it, but probably uh, because I also know we don't have the tools at this moment to assess those kind of things. Uh, so that there comes the ration, rational guy again, uh, so popping up. Uh, so um, let's put it aside because for me, uh, so as a biolog biological uh, so guy that thinks everything is determined in bi biology, um, I hope I can return to this planet in 500 years so that I can see what tools we have yeah. to kind of <coughs> uh, see and understand all the things that I cannot explain right now. Uh, so, uh, for instance, uh, one of those great moments, and there was definitely a purpose to it. Uh, so, um, I was going to travel to a very big city I didn't know. Uh, so, I, I was just there, I think, for a conference. Uh, so, and I met one of my old friends from high school. Uh, which uh, he had no reason to be there, uh, so but we reconnected again, uh, so and it's a big city. So what are the odds and the chances that you actually in a big city run into to each other? So these are minimal, uh, so and that's the things that I think. Okay, this is something. There is a meaning to that one. I do not know. I also do not know who controls it, but but it, it's telling me something, and I think uh, so. That's really true. Uh, but we really at this moment don't have the tools like what made it happen why did it happen and i know what the meaning was because now we're connected again and we lost that connection and there was a great reason to be connected again because we had a great connection in the past we just lost because life took a different turn so then something that's crucial as we figure out what we're uniquely blueprinted for what our gifts are that we want to bring to the world as we go through that process, something that we have to get right is the way that we have this 
process of self-love, self-appreciation. And a great big part of that is how we sleep, how we eat, how we exercise, how we nourish our emotions, how we could show up in the world to bring these gifts forward. What are some of the things that you've been noticing about circadian rhythms, about how the economic machinery affects circadian rhythms, about how sleep can actually help bring these beautiful gifts into the world? Yes, it's it's. I think it's great that you already bring it up. You, you need to see it in a cultural perspective. Uh, so the biology is the same. Uh, so the biology is a very old, ancient clock. Uh, so that's called the biological clock. It has been entrained. Uh, so thousand and thousand over thousand years. Uh, so like light input is important. Uh, so to kind of set your body. Uh, so to sync with the day night circle. Uh, so and then hey, we should sleep at night. So that's a great system, and that system kind of loves regularity. Yeah. So um, and you definitely see it in the Western societies that people don't listen, don't follow that anymore. Yeah. So uh, they're not listening to their body anymore. Yeah. So when they feel tired, they grab a Coke or a coffee. Yeah. So actually the body is telling you, you should take rest. Yeah. And so we set alarm clocks at stupid times. Yeah. And so we even have things like a daylight savings times, yeah. which just make sure that your body runs for the economy, for the, and that's kind of stupid because we have been blueprinted has so to listen to our bodies to wake up has so when the sun rises and when it gets a little bit warmer to sleep when it gets a little bit cooler at night has so and we ignoring all those kind of signs at this moment has so if you go to cultures has so where has so the economic pressure has so and the lifestyle is not that busy you see totally different patterns uh, so uh, you see the same kind of basic patterns, but you see not that people are tr trying to kind of uh, so put in everything into the daily life and being awake and not missing out uh, so on anything. Uh, so the fear of missing out. Uh, so it's you need to be a good spouse. You need to be uh, so uh, a great and uh, have a professional output. You need to spend time with your spouse and your kids. You have to have yourself time. I need to need to watch a movie. There is Netflix. So you need to put it all uh, so in 24 hours. And I always said, like, wouldn't it be great if the day would start with sleep? Because if it would start with sleep, you can say, okay, let's schedule eight hours for sleep. And then let's see what the rest is. But now yes, yes. sleep is at the end of the day. Yeah. So uh, we are procrastinating procrastinating has so like oh no i need to do that email oh no i need to spend some quality time i need to call my mom and so because you need to check all those boxes and maybe has so our body has so we'll get used to that in a few thousand years because we evolve bodies don't have a revolution they have an evolution yeah. evolution yeah. takes time yeah, yeah. so I do not know whether it happens. I will not be around. I don't know whether I want to be around. Uh, so if sleep was not that important, evolution would already have taken care of it that we only would need sleep for four hours. Yeah. But that didn't happen. Yeah. Wow, yeah. This is so crucial. It's that you know, sleep as part of evolution has come with this really beautiful input of you get light source you get this process of like saving what's being stored in the nervous system in this memory of this vehicle you get this light and night cycle that happens uh, night and day cycle that happens with the sun that the biological machinery sort of follows and then like you described it's as though then in today's modern day now it went from having a first eight hours no matter what always scheduled for sleep and the other 16 hours as to whatever to now let's do as much productive work as possible now with all of the different things that we have to check in and then if i only sleep four or six hours no problem just sacrifice the sleep but sleep is so important for um, our body to actually be in a state of peak wellness and peak ability um, to actually be productive it's actually more detrimental to have less sleep um, it's less productive the next day it's ridiculous you're kind of repeating right? so what my first mentor said when I did my first step in, in, in a PhD and so he said like Roy 
don't stay late and it's kind of interesting uh, to kind of hear and of course that was Europe and uh, so he said don't stay late because whatever you do has uh, so after six o'clock and uh, so you can do tomorrow has uh, so probably in, in a quarter of the time and uh, so you're actually wasting time has uh, so to try to be productive has uh, so till very late it's just a waste of time your crea- your your body needs to have a recovery and leisure time uh, so to everything what you have learned throughout the day and there are great experiments uh, so that have been done that people try to solve a puzzle a very complex one they didn't do so they slept a night and then the morning they were given the puzzle again and they solved it within 5 minutes because the insight that was created has so throughout the night has so because that's what your brain is doing it's kind of all the information that you have processed throughout the night has so taking away all the things that are not necessarily and then organizing them and then connecting the dots so learning happens throughout the night emotional processing happens during sleep so it's not only bodily recovery it's a lot of mental has an emotional processing that happens as well your brain is pretty busy when you're asleep oh yeah Oh, so damn busy, and those, the sleep spindles are so interesting. <laughs> yeah, I know those. Those are so fascinating, and just like the body's ability to like click the save button on all of the yeah. previous data that you got the day. I love how, um, like you said that your um, it was your prof it was your professor that said yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. So it's so interesting that if you stay late, that you're gonna take four times potentially more time um, doing the material that you would just the next day in your peak state. Yeah. That's such important um, feedback, actually. So the main thing is that I also say that how to college students has so if you really want to learn has so things and has so everything that you has so takes during class and, and really take it as so as something in your backpack for the rest of your life. You need to has so be very well rested when you go through all the study materials, and then you need to get into has so your bed early and then has sleep on it. Yeah. So what you see a lot of students doing has so they're having a lot of fun, rush it through the book, yeah. the textbook, don't sleep has so at all four hours before the exam, yeah. so it doesn't transfer to long term memory yeah. has so it's it's just then again it's a waste of time. So and that says so sleep has not been valued and has so also because we really didn't know a lot about the function of sleep and because sleep science is very young as so I think it started I think back in the in the 50s as so of the 20th century that we could kind of quantify sleep and of course the Greek philosophers already had great thoughts about sleep and what sleep would do and they said like hey as so and so if your if your body is warm and so then it's alive and when the temperature is cold then it's dead and somewhere in between has so that sleep and because your body drops as so in temperature throughout the night and so and they saw they, they already had kind of great things but they didn't describe it as so in a way that as so is as good as it is right now because we now have new technology as so to kind of capture what's really happening and that's again come i want to come back to this planet in 300 years and see what her technology can do then okay i'm so so curious now like what can we do like what is sleep score labs doing yeah so we are kind of giving has uh, so uh, a sleep lab has uh, so to the end consumer or to the people in the world and uh, so um we see that there is a big problem has uh, so Two third of the people have reporting that they don't had a great night, has so at least a few times in a week. So fifty percent of the people, have, or sorry, yeah, it's fifty percent of the people don't hitting the required minimum of seven hours. And so, and we were thinking it uh, kind of as the way that you think about obesity and being overweight. Yeah. So we want to give you a tool, and so that tool is has so that what is what we created. So. Uh, people have a scale in their bathroom so they can actually have so mm-hmm. be on the scale and see okay now I need to go for a week for has so having salads for lunch has so and skip the fries and the burgers mm-hmm. so uh, you didn't have even the doctor didn't have the tool so the medical doctor didn't have the tool to measure sleep yeah. as so on the fly you had to go to a lab and then they put all kinds of wires on your brain and you had to sleep in a hospital bed which is not a natural situation at all yeah. so so that was step one so giving 
tools to people that they can measure sleep and also making a very simple matrix. So because sleep in the comfort of their homes, in the comfort of their homes, and then they get metrics on yeah. their own sleep. So and we we wanted to try to keep it as simple as as so that you see the weight on your weighting yeah, skills. So yeah. not saying like, hey, it was twenty percent REM and fifteen percent deep. So and that whole list of that sleep doctors normally give you. Yeah, yeah. We just have a sleep score that kind of has so calculates all those important elements. So it's a score from zero to one hundred, and over time you kind of learn what what a sleep score is that's good for you. And for me, I personally know I'm a good sleeper, but if for some reasons I hit seventy five three nights in a row, then I need to take care the next day has so and yeah. get some extra Z, which yeah, is so. like the salad instead of the burger, like yeah, you're describing. Yeah, so then has so I go way. for the salad for it. sleep. Yeah, for sleep. Yeah. But we also kind of noticed that. Different. Which in some cases is kind of like just not like either going to bed really early or just making it so that um, maybe you're not waking up to an alarm yeah, in the morning. Yeah. Maybe you're really just letting your body naturally awake yeah. um, when it's yeah. well rested. Yeah. yeah, for for a body, it's best uh, for for a body for all process consistency is best. Uh, so, but consistency is also a very dull life. Yeah. Uh, so, if you would go to bed, uh, so at at the same time every day, wake up at the same time every day, have your breakfast at the same time, uh, so have your lunch at the same time, have the, even your beer at the same time every day, and your coffee, body would love that because they the body doesn't need to adjust anything. Yeah. So they're like, oh, it runs on my schedule. That's great. Uh, so, but luckily we're human beings. But uh, the body so. also wants dynamicism as well. It wants both. On a, on right? a, di on a yeah. different on a different level. Huh? But yeah. okay. For instance, there are hardly any an animals with insomnia. Why? They go to sleep when they feel tired. When they feel tired, not so, not I need to finish this report. I need yes. a coke or a coffee. Yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah. or hey, yeah that other netflix episode i would love to see it oh uh, that yeah, was a great yeah, cliffhanger yeah, yeah. let's do the other one yeah, yeah. and so so and has, so that's what has so and so a horse. Well, but sometimes they might find themselves in an area in nature where um they may uh um, only be unfamiliar and then they can't necessarily go to sleep because of danger and they have to go yes yeah, yeah, like only that. if yeah. they're in danger huh? so, uh -huh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. so so what you're now saying is actually has so we putting our bodies okay. in a danger state every single time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And because yeah, yeah. Uh, so right. it's like that's oh, right. yeah. you saying to your body, I cannot sleep. The body interprets that there is a reason that I cannot can sleep. I, yeah. So, so uh, yeah. Interesting. So we're actually triggering our physiology against what it's trying to get us to do, um, and through that process, we're actually causing some sort of physiological confusion um, of what's going on because there's actually nothing to fucking be in danger about whatsoever no, in these buildings. Uh, but even your biological clock has so has so who who gets the information has so of the light has so with has so the new artificial light. Uh, oh my so gosh! It yeah. just thinks yeah. like, oh, it's still awake. It's still awake. It's still daytime. It's still, still daytime. Still daytime. Daytime. So yeah, yeah. Because yeah, the yeah. biological clock sends them to all the other clocks. Has so yeah, in the body, yeah. hey, it's still daytime. Screen has, time, so, especially now yeah. too. Oh yeah. my gosh! Yeah. So and that's yeah, yeah. that's has so what kind of. It's, wow. it's not how it has been designed. So even when the sun goes down at like five or six o'clock, sometimes during yeah, yeah PM yeah. right now during the winter, um, holy cow! Yeah. Uh, now we're yeah. watching screens for like six or seven more hours yeah. past yeah. the sun going down. I, I need to ask you about yeah. this um, because you started teaching us about what you're doing, and I just want to yeah. I just want to um, see. So. W am I wearing? Is this a wearable? No. In, you know, how, so what do I yeah, do? So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so coming back, yeah, so what we want in the end, yeah, just like you do weight management and, and be on your scale every single day, we want love to actually yeah, so with a simple matrix uh, to measure your sleep. And we make it relatively easy because we also believe that sleep is all about comfort. So you don't want to have devices in your bed or on your wrist or on your head. Mm -hmm. So we have a device that you just put next to your head yeah, so to, on your nightstand. So it is hmm. totally contactless. Hmm. So we have a device, has so. But since last year, we also launched has so something that you can use just on your uh, iPhone. Yeah, so how, how does this how does this work the um the device on the smartphone or um, yeah so yeah, yeah. How, so the, the, how does the, it measure my sleep if it yeah so that's where a lot of has uh, so a signal processing and knowledge about sleep comes in. So what really happens is does it that have to watch me? No, luckily not. No, because me. hey, sorry, you don't want to be watched in your bedroom, <laughs> so has or even be listened to as some other companies <laughs> are doing. So now what we do has so it's um, it's uh, the device is sending a radar wave, a very low energy radar wave, lower than Bluetooth, uh, so and that bounces off your body. 
So, and by doing so, we measure your full breathing pattern, uh, so and your full motion pattern, Whoa. and all the different sleep stages. Uh, so, have slightly different breathing patterns and motion patterns. So, with a lot of algorithm work, uh, we actually as sleep score labs uh, so have an algorithm and we validate that against the gold standard, and we're doing uh, so very good. Uh, so, so that's what we did. We also so phones can actually propagate out radar signals no, so that's the hardware oh, device. that's the hardware device so and then we find okay. out like a lot of people are actually not willing to pay has so 150 bucks for sleep measurement yeah, okay. so so that's why last year we launched sonar technology has so from phones so what we do is we use actually the speaker and the microphone off has so the smartphone so the smartphone sends out has so hardly noticeable and for most people not noticeable noticeable sound waves uh, so that all again bounces back off your body back to has uh, so the microphone and we get the same signals for has uh, so breathing and motion wait okay so a an unnoticeable uh frequency yeah. of of sound is yeah. emitted from the device yeah. and then it bounces off of me yeah. and you can measure my Full breathing rate my of your full chest. Full breathing rate so, of my chest. Uh, so, uh, so you actually what you measure is the movement of your body. So you measure the movement of your chest cavity. Uh, so and the gross movement where you're tossing and turning. So, and then there's a a way for you to be able to tell how long I'm sleeping, how well I'm sleeping. Yeah, because all those different has so the the differences in movement and the differences in breathing has so relate to different sleep stages, light sleep and deep sleep and REM sleep. So and then we actually in the end can see like okay, so you spent has so that amount of time it took you so many minutes to fall asleep. Uh, so again, we think that's great information for the doctor and maybe for the has so the biohackers. Uh, so but for the end consumer we just presented as a single number so that there's something easy and you kind of know like okay for me 80 is my number and i go for it so so i'm just doing something as simple as downloading the sleep score labs app yeah yeah it's as simple as that and you put uh, your phone next to your bed has so has so at night uh, but one thing i want to has to add we don't believe that has so it's all about the measurement and the measurement should be great but people are looking actually has so into things that really can improve their sleep. So, and we in the sleep field called it as the so-called so what problem. Uh, so now you know your sleep score. What should you do? Most simple, just go to bed and sleep, actually get more sleep. Is that not the most simple thing? It's the most simple thing. But hey, if you were taking, for instance, four cups of coffee after four o'clock. Oh, that's horrible. That will be hard. And a lot yeah. of people actually do not know. So we give them a full toolbox uh, so as well. Like, uh, so we okay. say like, okay, this is what we see in, in your data. Uh, so, and this is given, uh, so what we see in your data, that we think at this moment will work best for you to improve your sleep. Uh, so, and we connect you to either that kind of tips and tricks based uh, so on your yeah, yeah. personal sleep, or we even connect you to products. And the great thing with the products is that uh, so we uh, curated them and we even validate them. We do a lot of studies for manufacturers in kind of showing them that their products are evidence-based eh? so they say like hey we think it or we believe it uh, improves sleep and we say show us the data and if they don't have it we say okay we can provide you that data so we do studies and you can actually say uh, so hey it has been tested by sleep score labs and sleep score labs has shown that it's really has uh, so improving sleep of people yeah because yeah. unfortunately in the world of sleep, there's a lot of snake oil so that yeah. people can buy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is great. The hardware partners one or just other partners is very interesting for improving sleep. I like that a lot and being able to prove with your sleep score that if they do or not. Um, and then just in general, I just, I'm finding, of course, all of this stuff with digital signal processing, actually being able to propagate out the sound wave and gain some sort of an understanding of what's being, mm -hmm. you're calibrating back um, from that process. That part's nuts. Um, and then, is it is it pretty like clear for you guys to see whether or not um, I'm uh, get actually getting like eight hours of sleep compared to six? Like it's very clear for you guys to show a sleep score that's significantly higher for someone that's sleeping uh, eight hours. Like it's it's like it's that clear. Yeah, so because we 
the the data that we kind of has so has so estimate from all our signals has been validated against the clinical way of 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 measuring sleep the great thing is has so and that's what we do then in the back end as well is we now collecting the huge data set of people sleeping in their real home situation and uh, so and i was kind of shocked when i first saw had that kind of data because it's kind of so different than from all the things that we know from small studies that have been carried out by sleep researchers in the hospital settings or in the laboratory settings because people sleep differently in a home situation than they sleep in a lab yeah and uh, so and that's where we also want to kind of progress as uh, so the knowledge in sleep and uh, so getting a lot of data on how people actually sleep has uh, so because you might have a partner, your partner snores, yeah. so that impacts you. That partner will never be with you in a sleep study or in uh, so in any kind of study because that's not how the scientific or the academic model of doing studies works. And in the end, we have that data and then most most likely context data. Uh, so we know that you sleep with a partner, uh, so that snores, and of course. They need to consent uh, so that we get that information. So it's not that we uh, just collect all the information uh, so by just opening a microphone. That's not what we're doing. Uh, so we, we don't want to. So, But we building this kind of new data set of what we call in science terms ecologically valid uh, so data. So it's really measured in the field. Uh, so with real people in real daily life or daily night situations. I, I, I really thought what you were saying was so interesting also about how um, when we sleep next to a partner, that also drastically changes um, how we sleep literally next to another like human being in the same bed. Um, some people go and choose to sleep in different rooms, uh, even though they're maybe in, in the relationship. Um, and then there's this big data set that you have. What others, like, first, like, let's hear your thoughts about, like, sleeping in different areas. And then also, um, I'd like to hear your thoughts about, like, what you can also do with um, data on people that are, um, that are uh, l like, longitudinally that you're improving um, their sleep. And then um, where other insights can come from data. Yeah, so I actually have so two questions. Uh, let's start with the first one. Um, sleeping together. Uh, so it's, again, interestingly, uh, a very understudied topic because most of the sleep researchers has so have a single person in the bed when they study. Uh, so what we kind of know, uh, there, I think there have been two studies in the past that really were measuring brain waves, and it was kind of inconclusive. Uh, so one study said, like, okay, uh, so uh, the partner was, the men were sleeping better than the women in general. And uh, so another study, I think saw that there was some sinking in this in the sleep stages mm. uh, so um, but I would say it's kind of incon inconclusive uh, a big factor though is that has uh, so people find just has uh, so it's their feeling that they find more safe as uh, so being close to someone else yeah. uh, so it's the presence of so it's presence of someone else wow. both in the mind but also you you feel it physically because it's the the warmth that you radiate that's that cuddling effect yeah, yeah. so yeah. Yeah. and you see it has also in a lot of of mammals and uh, so they sleep together and it's not only because of energy conversation uh, conversation conservation Conver yeah, sorry. <laughs> energy conservation and uh, um, uh, uh, temperature has our energy yeah. yeah energy conversation but also yes, yes. Um, because they feel safe together yeah and, and so that that's 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 the mental part so um but wow if you're a light sleeper and your partner snores or yeah. you're a light sleeper and very unrestful and your partner has so is or if is, you're just on different uh, like you go to bed two hours yeah, later and yeah, wake up two yeah, hours later yeah. yeah so then has so it might be actually a good has so idea has so to just has so sleep for a few nights at least has so separate has so and so you just have two bedrooms and has so me being up late at night is not affecting them yeah. them waking up early is not yeah. affecting me yeah so yeah, has like so that, some yeah. people uh, also and that's anecdotal i say that hey it had also great impact on their sex life uh, because then it was really special has so on the moment that they went to bed uh, together again so yeah that's so interesting too interesting so. um how about uh, feedback i know i know the whole data point um maybe we can get to it just given the amount of other questions that i think um uh i that I would like answered. There's um 
um, this one, you were giving this example of stop drinking coffee after like four o'clock, mm-hmm. right? Stuff like that. Or another one is, um, you know, people say are like, don't eat this last meal yeah. at like midnight, yeah. you know, like, yeah. yeah. So give us, give us these examples for yeah, the, yeah, sleep. The, the, the great thing is, uh, so d- you should see that as kind of general guidelines. Yeah? So, and it might work for you and it doesn't, might not work for some, someone else, but it's, and I think that's where we also need to think of. Uh, so there are a lot of guidelines. Uh, so if you really look into the literature, if there is there is there any empirical uh, so evidence that is really works. Uh, so it's, it's really limited. So again, it's not that well studied. Uh, why? Because it's very hard to study. So, um, but for me, for instance, I know that I'm relatively caffeine insensitive. So I can have that double shot of espresso at 10 o'clock at night has so and mm. i sleep very well it has to do has so with s- s- the constellation of my dna and my caffeine sensitivity other people might not so so the general rule is to be on the safe side don't drink caffeine has so after three o'clock has so avoid spicy meals has so has so because mm. spicy meals can do things that actually keep you awake and keep your body on a kind kind of higher arousal level mm. But you can imagine that if you were raised as so in having yeah. a jalapeno yeah. pepper in every single meal, you'll be fine. You will be fine. Yeah. So, okay, okay. And then um, let's talk about all of the data. So then, what do you? How many, how many people are using Sleep Score Labs right now? Yeah. So, uh, so in. Uh, 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 Interesting, yeah, so that's kind of yeah, so, uh, business confidential information because we have yes, a lot yes, of uh, yes. properties, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, competitors. But yeah, so um, our data set and our analysis easily has yeah, so go over and yeah, so are using 5,000 people, has yeah, so then spending has yeah, so a million nights. Yeah, so yeah, rather than great. doing a study has yeah, so where you say like, hey, yeah, so I have 20 people has yeah, so and I have two nights. And I think that's where the difference is. Uh, so, yep. for instance, if I do an intervention study in an academia setting, uh, so they measure you one night, uh, so then you take uh, so the intervention, then you come back and they measure you uh, another night. That night might be a very bad night for you for all the other things uh, so that might, might be have happening in your life. Uh, so, And I always use a very old-fashioned example like... Uh, you know those old computers with those dip switches, uh, so mm-hmm. you have to uh, so set a, a switch on on or off on your main board. So um, sleep is like having 100 dip switches, and whenever 51 are kind of set uh-huh. to a favor uh, for sleep, then yeah. you will sleep better. Interesting. But it can yeah. be it yeah. can be the caffeine and the fight that you had with your partner, yeah. and the email that you got from your boss, oh, and yeah. all. A, a totally. single uh, so you're laying there switch. trying to sleep and yeah. and you're thinking so, about overly yeah. thinking about that issue that and that's the about, great yeah. thing hey, because our technology is not invasive and you don't need to have the, the wires on your head uh, so and somebody yeah, to yeah. apply those we get data night after night after night after night so we can see slow processes and changes uh, so evolving what's the proximity that the device has to be next to me it's a it's an arm length an so, arm length yeah, away so, yeah yeah okay and can it be in like airplane mode and still work? Yeah, so that's a great thing. Uh, so we collect all the data on your phone and then just in the end, uh, so it needs a Wi-Fi connection, but it can be run in airplane great, mode. Great, but yeah. it can run in airplane yeah. mode. Yeah. Some people just don't want even, yeah, want it just in airplane mode at night or even yeah. off, powered off yeah, as a new so, thing. Yeah, so, so, uh, so, yeah. The so great, maybe I pay even just like $20 for just the device that can do what Sleep Score Labs yeah. does rather yeah. than uh, also have to have my phone on yeah. um, next Yeah, so, uh, so that's an Another one. Technically, has so, but the, the device is not, was not designed for it. But technically, you can start has so the device with the phone and bring your phone to another room, and so then bring in the phone the next day, so then you don't have any phone next to you. Yeah. So yeah. because yeah. it's the the, exactly. the, the device the, the phone for us has so with the device is just the the control panel. So um, another question that I have is that. Um, the future of like productivity and the economic machinery but also our focus on our well-being here at TransTech, this type of stuff um where are all of these things converging how do we actually have true transformations in consciousness and wanting to become more healthy and have better well-being but also um deal with the pressures of the economic machinery that are happening um what is then like the future of sleep yeah i think 
it's I, th- I would even call it a little bit has so broader what is the future of life of life yeah. has so has so uh, I think at this moment has so and I, that's why I love conferences like this we think too much in silos so the fitness guy thinks in terms of fitness has so and the food uh, guys uh, or girl thinks in in terms of food and then I think of sleep uh, so in the meditation things of meditation I actually think uh, so they are so interconnected and uh, so that we need to have at least a few people thinking on what if we take that more helicopter view or more holistic approach uh, so that is actually has uh, so tagging all of these things or at least connecting the dots uh, because very yeah. simple thing um, you might want to have a new year resolution new year resolution and you say I want to has uh, so be in better fitness so or has so i want to lose weight so i as a sleep guy come in and say like hey did you actually know that uh, so if you just don't care take care about your sleep you actually don't have the energy has so to run that mile every 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 single day and if you don't have enough sleep you have a preference for more fatty and more sugary food so yeah. you will not lose weight yeah, so yeah, yeah. it's again so i need to learn actually has so from for instance the fitness guy and the meditation girl and the food guru and uh, so what's important from from them and then together uh, so transform it rather than stay in our silos uh, so in our ivory tower and yeah, try yeah, to yeah. solve uh, so the problem from a single angle I love that. Yeah, the super multivariate way of the future of health and well-being. I love that. Um, and the component of sleep. I mean, I've, again, just so many ways to take this. Does it feel like um, humanity is a biological bootloader for a digital super intelligence? Um, I don't know. So, uh, so I think... Um I think again, so we are we are we are we are an evolutionary species, so it doesn't go that fast. And so, what do you think is the most beautiful thing in creation? Um, the most beautiful thing for me in creation is the unexpected. And so, because you do something which has so you never thought you were able to, and so and then for me, it's also has so sharing that creation with other people. So, and I think that's uh, so what I think are the two components for me that are important. Uh, so, in creation, it's like uh, so bringing something, bringing something new. Uh, so, and then being able to share. Yeah, bringing something new and being able to share. Yeah, yeah. that kind of takes us to what is your unique gift that you can bring to the world, and then how do you yeah, yeah. yeah share it into the world? Uh, so, as, as, as you probably know, uh, so I, I I used to work for Apple, uh, so the tech company here. So, and I brought uh, a few features for sleep on their iOS system on their phone. So uh, for me, it's kind of crazy to kind of know that uh, so millions of people in the world uh, so using that piece of tech and using something that I put there for better health. Uh, so mm-hmm. I, I had that feature that has called Night Shift that sc- uh, dims the screen at night. Uh, so, and a lot of people told me that was the best feature of that iOS release. Yeah. Uh, so they didn't care about uh, so that it was uh, so another camera feature. And I think that's also where tech companies says, uh, so I think getting better in thinking of the health consequences, but also uh, thinking yeah. of uh, so the the psychological consequences uh, has so because yes. if I see kids and has so they are has so playing a full night with just a screen and don't interact with other human beings yeah, yeah, yeah. I rather would take the, has so the tablet away and uh, so the tablets are great but we're still human beings we still need to have that has so face-to-face interaction I still has so need a hug of somebody rather yeah, than yeah, just a digital yeah. chat yeah 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 that's that's so that's so profound um the 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 the, the night the night shift or like a uh, flux is such a pr- yeah. uh, such a crucial thing that that we use um, um that gives us a better life like you said uh, an actual hug um, rather than just a digital chat yeah. um, how can we use these philosophies morals ethics uh, as our um, 
uh, main principles as we build technology um, to enhance our world. And um, so I, I, I love that. I love that so much. Um, Roy, what a great conversation this has been. Thank you for coming on the yeah, show. Yeah, thank you so much. And I really enjoyed it as well. Huh? So thank I think you. Uh, so if you didn't stop me, we'd, we could chat for hours. So uh, I know. <laughs> happy First to be all, back. <laughs> I mean, this is a big deal. I, I get your damn sleep, everyone. Like, yeah. it be per, because it really helps you um, yeah. live uh, your physiology better, also your productivity better the next day. I mean, yeah. it's just, yeah. Yeah. Get your damn sleep, everyone. Thanks for tuning into this episode. We greatly appreciate it. We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below on what we talked about. Let us know what you're thinking. Also, check out the links below to Sleep Score Labs, also to Roy's profiles. Check out all those links in the bio below. Check out the links to Transformative Technology Conference in the bio below as well. You can support them. You can support Simulation. You can support other artists, entrepreneurs, organizations around the world that you believe in. You can find our links below our PayPal cryptocurrency Patreon link. You can design cool merch and get paid. All those links are in the bio below. And go and build the future, everyone. Manifest your dreams into the world. We love you very much. Thank you for tuning in, and we will see you soon. Peace.